أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إخوتي في الله فاعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد I want to start with incident that took place with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran that he was the best role model to follow. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَّنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِ This is very unique story that happened to one of the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is Miqdad bin Amr he said myself and my two companions we had nothing to eat We're talking about the generosity of the messenger of Allah we had nothing to eat so we went فَتَعَرَّضْنَا للناس. You know, if you're from the Arab country or from Muslim country, you will know when the person is hinting for something that is in need. So he said, we went and we presented ourselves to the people. We didn't want to say, please feed us. Because this is from the karam from the rujula, from the muru, from the muru at rajul that you don't really tell people that you're in need however you hint. You know, it's not right for you to say, I'm in need, please give me some. This is, is not how a mu'min should behave. He said, فَتَعَرَّضْنَا للناس. So we present ourselves to the people, ask them questions. But nobody understood what we want. Nobody wanted to feed us. So we went to the Messenger of Allah and we said, Ya Rasulullah, we are dying out of hunger. We are almost blind and deaf. We cannot feel or see or hardly hear anything because of hunger, subhanAllah. So help us, O Messenger of Allah. Special case. So the Messenger of Allah said, Come. So he took them. And he said, Do you see these three goats? They were gifts. Now, all of us, every night, we were shared the milk of these goats. So you guys take care of them, milk them, 
and leave my share for me every night. So, Miqdad said, it was fine, alhamdulillah. It was normal. But one night, he said, radiyallahu an, one night, shaitan came to me. And he said, look, it's after Isha. And the messenger of Allah perhaps is with some of the Ansar and they probably fed him. So whatever milk that left for the messenger of Allah, you drink it. Shaitan is very tricky, right? He fools us all the time. He says, it's yours. It's going to go bad anyway. You know, it's, it's going to be old. So you drink it. So I say to myself, Wallahi, he's right. Rasulullah is going to come back with full stomach, alhamdulillah, and he's going to go to his houses, and he's not going to even ask about the milk. So, bismillah. So he had to drink the milk. He said, as soon as I finished the milk, shaitan said to me, woe to you, what have you done? Do you know how tricky shaitan is? Seconds ago, he's saying, you know, it's okay. It makes every sense for you to drink this milk. He said, woe to you, what have you done? Now Rasulullah will come through one of these doors, and then when he sees that there's no milk, he will make dua against the person who drank his milk. So you're doomed. So he said, Subhanallah, I felt so sad. You know, I'm grieving there, I'm sitting there, I'm so sad. And he said, whatever I have, you have a little garment that when I cover my head, my feet show. And when I cover my feet, my head show. So he says, Subhanallah, I'm struggling with this. فَإِذَا بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Rasulullah just walked through the door. So I said to myself, you are doomed. You are doomed. خلاص. So the messenger of Allah went to the container. He lifted. It's empty. So he stood up صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he raised his hand. Al-Miqdad said, I ascertain that Rasulullah will curse me. And not only me, me and my children, we're all going to be doomed. So he said, Allahumma at'aman at'amana wasqiman saqana. The message of Allah, instead of making dua against a person, he said, well, Allah, feed whoever feeds us and provide drinks whoever provides drinks for us. Miqdad, he said, Subhanallah, Rasulullah, he walked away and he said, Wallahi, I would not miss that dua. So what did he do? He took a dagger, a knife. And he went to the goats, he slaughtered the best of the three and feed the messenger of Allah so he can win the dua of the messenger of Allah. So subhanallah. So he said, radiyallahu anhu, I went and before I slaughtered, I realized that out of all the goats are full again with milk. I said, subhanallah. I checked the second one is full. Third one is ready, mashallah. So I run to the, one of the house of the messenger of Allah and I say, give me the biggest container that you have. So I came and I milked all of them until it was full. So I went back to the house or to the messenger of Allah and I said, drink. Qala, where did he get this from? He said, don't worry messenger of Allah, drink. You know, don't worry, just drink. He says, so he said, Bismillah, drank the milk. And then he gave it back to him. No, 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 finish, Ya Rasulullah. You drink more. He said, finally, he gave it to him and said, I cannot have it anymore. So I drank some of it. He said, then when I finish, when he finished, I start laughing out loud. I could not stand up for my laughter. He said, then the messenger of Allah said, Ya Miqdad, innaha ihda sawatik. Oh, Miqdad, this is one of your tricks. What have you done? What have you done? Then I told the messenger of Allah exactly what happened. So he said to me, so look at the generosity messenger of Allah. Subhanallah, why don't you tell me so we can give our brothers some of that milk? I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, you had enough milk and I had enough, enough milk. I don't care who else goes hungry. You know, alhamdulillah, two of us are full. I don't care anyone else who goes hungry. Subhanallah. But look at the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
You know, he didn't say, Ya Allah, whoever took that milk, destroy him. Oh Allah, make him blind. Oh Allah, give him this and that. No, he made dua for him. So the messenger of Allah was the most generous person. As you know, and sometimes you have to give to gain more. And a lot of people, they just see, you know, the little things that they give. One of the A'rab was admiring sheep between two valleys, two mountains in a valley. Two mountains. So the messenger of Allah stood by him. And he said, do you like that sheep? Do you like all this? He said, I love them, Ya Muhammad. He's not even a Muslim. He said, they all yours. They all yours. The man did not leave one sheep behind. Radiyallahu an. One sheep behind. And then he went to his people. Guess what he said to them? He went back to his tribe. Everything with him. And he said, Go to Muhammad, go to Muhammad. Say, so go to Muhammad, go. He indeed gives as a man who have no fear of poverty. Give. And subhanallah, ya ikhwati fillah. Messenger of Allah, when he realized one of the Sahabiyat, this was Asma, who was a bit concerned how much she gives and how much she keeps. Subhanallah, he said to her, Ya Asma, give and Allah will give you. Ya Asma, give and Allah will give you. Why? Because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always used to care about others and he used to worry about the well-being of others and he used to give. So if we are Muslims, and we follow the footsteps of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Should we not be like him? Should we not be like him? Absolutely. And this is what I want you to understand, brothers and sisters. There's something called tamanni. Tamanni is to desire something. You want to desire? To be with, the Muhammad, with Muhammad sallallahu with messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or you want to desire to be in Jannah. But at the same time, we are not willing to give much. Or to be as generous as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was so unique how the Sahaba of Rasulullah used to listen to him all the time. One of the incidents. It's one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam learned that Allah revealed this ayah and listen to the ayah. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not achieve righteousness, piety, the level, the high level of iman until you become generous. Until you give the best that you have. Until you say, I'm not going to save anything for myself because Allah provides, I'm going to give this. Not the worst, not the thing that we despise, no, the best that we have. And then the Sahabi came to the Messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The best that I have is this garden. And Rasulullah used to live in this garden, this bustan and used to go. He said, Ya Rasulullah, give it fi sabilillah. Messenger of Allah said, Bakhin bakh. He said, What a successful transaction. Give it to your closest people. But look at the mentality of that Sahabi was to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the footsteps of the Messenger of Allah. And perhaps. I like to mention the story of Abu Dahdah, subhanAllah. How many of you know the story of Abu Dahdah? Only one or two. Now listen to this man who purchased his Jannah. He purchased Jannah. He purchased everything that he has for one tree in Jannah. One tree. Abu Dahdah. And this man, this, the man, one of the Sahabi who was killed in the battle of Uhud, subhanAllah. Not only that he gave his wealth, 
but also he gave his life for the sake of Allah. Abu Dahdah was sitting with the Messenger of Allah. Now listen to this. Sitting with the Messenger of Allah. And then who comes to him? A young boy, a yatim, who's crying. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, inna jari, my neighbor, my neighbor, did not allow me to build a wall between my place and his, between my farm and his. The Yatim, when his father died, got concerned about his palm trees, date trees. So he said, perhaps if I erect, if I build a wall between my neighbor and my garden, then I can always make sure that he's not going to take any of my dates. But subhanAllah, while he was building this, while he was building this, he realized there's a palm tree in the middle. So he said to the man, Ya Amma, give it to me or sell it to me. The Ansari said, that tree? No, I like it. The young boy said, just give it to me or sell it to me. He said, no. He said, then Wallahi, I will go to the messenger of Allah and I complain about what you said to me. So subhanAllah, the Ansari went, the young boy went to the messenger of Allah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. And my neighbor is not giving me anything. The Ansari was called by the Messenger of Allah. Rasulullah said, sell it to him. He said, no. He said, well, give it to him then. He said, no. Then the Messenger of Allah, intelligent man, Kareem, he said, guess what? If you give him that tree, then Allah will give you a tree in Jannah. Is that a good deal, ya ikhwati fillah? Is that a good tree? It's a good deal. A tree from this dunya for a tree in Jannah. The Ansari said, no. It's my haqq. It's my tree. He's not getting it. And he walked away. Abu Dahdah had this farm. Some of the ulama said it had 600 trees. The best farm in the city of Medina. He looked the messenger of Allah and said, Ya Rasulullah. If I get him that tree, would I get the same deal? Would I get the tree in Jannah? He said yes. So Abu Dahda, he went after the Ansari. فَقَالَ يَا فُنَانَ قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ أَتَعْلَمُ حَدِيقَةِ Do you know my garden? He said, who doesn't know that one? He said, it's yours for that tree. قَالَ أَجُنِنْتِ Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? He said, no, Wallah, it's yours. And then he looked around and he saw people say, are you going to be witness of what he said? They said, yes. He said, for that tree, you can I can have your farm. Fine. So the Abu Dahdah went after the yatim. فَقَالَ يَا غُلَامُ Come, young boy. The tree that you ask for is yours. One tree. And he went to his wife, Abu Dahdah, who was in the, in the farm with her children. And subhanAllah, this is amazing. When he went to the farm, he didn't want to go in. But he stood at the door. فَقَالَ يَا أُمَّ دَحْدَاح Oh, the mother of Dahdah. قَالَتْ لَبَّيْكْ Yes. قَالُ خُرُجِي Get out. She said, what happened? He said, we sold the farm. She said, to whom? He said, Lillahi wa li rasooli. For Allah and His Messenger. Subhanallah. Qalat ya Aba Dahdah. Rabi hal bay'u ya Aba Dahdah. That was a successful transaction, ya Aba Dahdah. And Subhanallah. And at the gate of that farm, she sat checking children's pocket, their hands, and taking whatever in their hands and putting it back. And she said, this is not for us. This is for Allah. This is for Allah. Now, subhanAllah, this is the people that was trained by the messenger of Allah and showed them how to be generous. How to be generous. Now, one thing that I like of Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is they always generous. I went to a conference, not a conference, but Masjid Al-Rahmah. You familiar with Masjid al-Rahmah? 
And the brother was making fundraise for Masjid al Rahma out of generosity, subhanAllah. And he, they made 120,000, as I was told, pound, 120,000 pound on Saturday. And then Sunday, imagine what would the people say? Would they say, give us our money back? The Sheikh, he said to give the lecture and they said, no, do another fundraise. Who's asking? The administration of the masjid, la, the people. The people say, we want to give money for the sake of Allah, collect money from us. Now, they raised 120,000 pounds, sorry, pounds. Now we want to do, we want to compete. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, السابقون السابقون سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم So we want to do it here in the Green Lane Masjid and we want to Insha'Allah, in a good way, we want to defeat Masjid al-Rahma. Say Allahu Akbar. Say Allahu Akbar. Are we going to do better than Masjid al-Rahma? Don't give me that type of Insha'Allah. No. Say yes. Say yes. Say Insha'Allah, tahqiqan, yes. Yes, we will do it. See, we have more than 100, 200 people here. If we just go with a thousand pounds each for a period of a year, inshallah, you can do it better than that. Much better. And then we can go to Mr. Rahman and say, look, inshallah, you know, we smoked you. No. But this is musabaqa ila jannah. Musabaqa bayn al-ansar, al-aws wal khazraj used to compete with one another. Used to compete as a qabila. Muhajireen and Ansar used to compete. Salihin used to compete. So we're going to do the same, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim.